Today, I want to talk to you guys about binding. Hey everybody, this is Matt, we're at Texas Dose Guitars. Thanks for watching. Uh, so, I get a lot of questions about binding and plastic binding and wood binding and should I bind my neck and I hate neck binding and I hate body binding and blah, 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 blah. Um, but, uh, but there are a lot of questions about binding and there's a lot of opinions about binding and I want to show you some of the things that I do to uh, make binding a little easier. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about what binding is there for, what it's supposed to do, why we even have it in the first place. And, um, and uh, uh, in the comment section below, you guys can tell me about uh, all your thoughts about binding and whether you like it or plastic or wood or I don't want it on my neck or I definitely want it on my neck, stuff like that. Anyway, so let's jump right in. I've got, um, I've got a neck that I want to work with here and uh, it's, um, whoa, it's already got some binding taped onto it. Let me, let me pull that off because I'll be jumping ahead here. So I've got a neck that's, that's ready to go. This one's already fretted and uh, so it's going to get, um, it's going to get binding a la the Gibson binding where it has the little binding humps that go around the frets uh, because I think that that is both good and bad. And I also have this acoustic sized instrument that will be getting bound on the top. But um, this is a great place to start with what exactly is binding and why do we have it on guitars? Um, so this, uh, this particular instrument is built a lot like a standard flat top acoustic guitar. The sides are bent, it has kerfing, um, the back, it's a box, okay? We didn't start with a, uh, a chunk of wood and hog a bunch of it out and then glue a top to it. We bent the sides and we, we thinned out the back and the sides are about mm, 85 thousandths. Um, the top might be a little more than that. The back is a little less than that. This has a, a cedar top. So um, I'm gonna get closer here and you can, you can actually see in some places there, there's kerfing. And what kerfing is, is it's basically a glue surface for the top to get glued to the sides because like I said, the sides are very, very thin. So um, let me show you what I'm talking about. So you can see right along here, the kerfed edge can you see it in there? There's, that's the kerfing in there. And so what the binding is going to do is going to mask what that looks like. Now on the, the back, I haven't done anything yet, but you can see where the back is glued to the, to the sides. And generally speaking, you would bind that as well, or you would use a bursting technique to cover that, uh, that seam and hide that seam with paint. So anyway, in this instance, what we would, what the binding would do would be, like I was saying, kind of conceal that, um, that curved lining on the inside and um, uh, give you a, 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 nice, a nice transition from the, the top to the side. Now, you don't have to do that. In fact, lots of acoustic guitars are made with no binding, but um, uh, I guess some people think that binding kind of classes that up a little bit. Now you could use you could use wood binding. In fact, if you're bending the sides, it's a good opportunity to go ahead and shove your wood binding into the bending unit, bend that too, and then that way you have um, you have binding for the uh, for the sides ready to go. You don't have to worry about the the um, the binding cracking or breaking. But we're going to use plastic binding because. Um, I don't know why, uh, I just think it's kind of cool. This is a little bit of a prototype instrument. And, uh, oh, I remember why, because I wanted to have the, um, the Gibson style uh, raised nubbies on the side of this one. And, uh, and I wanna show you guys some of that stuff too. All right, let's get, uh, let's get a closer look here. So let's start with our body. Let me put my danger glasses on here so I can see. We're gonna start with the body. Um, this top is cedar and is super fragile and super thin. Um, so one of the things that I do when I, when I route this edge, and I, I don't have any footage of this, guys, you're just gonna have to take my word for it. I did it in, in lots and lots and lots of shallow passes, so I wasn't trying to, to make this rabbit for the binding all in one pass. Um, of course, start with a nice, uh, super clean, super new, super sharp, rabbiting bit and um, 
you guys can see here already that, um, that this plastic binding bends very, very easily. So um, I've, got my, uh, I've got my Stumac tape dispenser here. And um, I remember when they came out with this orange binding tape, um, I, was, I was not a fan. Because um, I was so used to the original, the old school uh, brown kind of paper tape. I really liked that stuff. Um, and I, I, I didn't give the orange stuff a chance. But, you know, after I did, I got to the point where I really liked it um, quite a bit better than, uh, than I thought I would. And, of course, since then, they have reintroduced the brown paper tape. And uh, I have uh, just gone ahead and, and switched over to the... Uh, to the orange stuff, and uh, I really like it, okay? So you can, um, as you can see, guys, you can work this, you can work this binding all the way around, especially on a non-cutaway guitar, without having to, um, uh, without having to do any bending of the binding, you know what I mean? Like you don't have to get the heat gun out and, and start bending binding and stuff like that. So, so when you're, uh, and I, I'm dry fitting this for the sake of the video, I don't necessarily recommend that you do this <clears throat> on every guitar because it's kind of a waste of tape, right? But just to give you an idea of what that's like, okay? So that is the way that you put the binding. Now you have to adhere the binding, it doesn't just stick. You have to adhere the binding some way. And um, in previous videos, I've actually wicked acetone into the binding. People have asked me about that before. You can use a syringe and you can flood uh, uh, acetone in between the binding and the, uh, the, the top and sides. Um, and that works great. Uh, it does kind of make a bit of a mess and it stains woods sometimes. Uh, especially oily woods like rosewood. So, um, so what you can also do is you can take a, like a paintbrush with acetone and you can kind of drop fill it in there. And uh, that's a good way to get it in. <clears throat> On this guitar though, we're gonna be using Stumax Bindall, uh, which is just a, a, a binding adhesive. And um, let's get some of this stuff out of the way so you can see what we're gonna do here. Um, but what, what the acetone does is it doesn't, it's not like it makes its own glue, but what it actually does instead is it melts the binding a little bit <clears throat> and it adheres, adheres the, uh, the binding to the, um, to the wood with, um, uh, with just it, this uh, melted this. Now there's a bunch of acetone in this, in this stuff too. Um, but uh, yeah, you get the idea. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can get this all on the camera here. I don't have a camera man today. So the idea, is you want to get a bunch of this bind all around the slot and it comes out pretty quick and you got about two minutes here to go around and press this stuff down. Okay, now is where the now is where the, the, the handy tape dispenser really comes in handy because you don't have to have a third set of hands to pull this off, okay? So we're just running around where the, uh, <clears throat> where the bind all stuff was and taping it down, son of a, <laughs> my tape dispenser got all gooped up. Okay, um, so we're just gonna run tape around the, uh, around the binding edge where we ran the, the adhesive. And this stuff sets up in about 12 hours. Um, if it's hot out, I'm sure you can, you can kind of push that, but for the sake of this video, we're just gonna let it sit overnight. Um, and you guys will just have to believe me. Okay, so, so you get this stuff all the way around and the binding will be uh, super, super well adhered because this bind all stuff is, um, it's good glue. Now a lot of people say that's the same thing as Duco cement. It's not, it's not unlike Duco cement, but uh, um, I have tested it and it is definitely not the same thing, okay? Um, 
So I'm not saying you can't use Duco cement, but I am telling you, this is not the, <laughs> this is not the same thing, okay? All right. Okay, I changed my camera angle a little bit here so you guys could kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just kind of mashing this stuff in there. Okay. Probably don't need that much binding cement right there, but we're gonna, we're gonna deal with it. Actually, no, we're not. We're gonna wipe that off. Okay. Make sure you press your binding down into the channel all the way to the bottom of the slot so you don't have any gaps that you have to fill later. Okay, And the tape will help hold it down and, and to the body, if that makes any sense. Okay. All right. So that looks pretty good. Let's go and, and kind of inspect for gaps. Make sure we don't have any. We actually look pretty good all the way around. So that is uh, so that is how you do body binding. Now, if you're binding something like a Les Paul or something, or that has like a cutaway, you're gonna have to bend this binding. Um, it will not, that's about as tight of a bend as you can get, which as you know, is uh, uh, a lot less tight than a Les Paul. So you're gonna have to heat this binding up. Um, uh, heat gun works great. There's a lot of different guys who are like, put a big pot full of sand on them. You know, I, I just use a heat gun and just bend it around there and work it. Take your time and go slow um, and you, your patience will be rewarded. <clears throat> okay, like I was saying, the neck on this guitar is going to get that kind of classic Gibson-y uh, binding where the nubs go over the frets. So what you have to do to prep for that is um, you have to get your fretboard glued on, you have to get all your frets in, you have to do, uh, well, you have the opportunity to glue whatever frets you wanna have glued in, glued in. And as you can see by the, um, uh, you can see the super glue, the CA glue that I whipped in here from the side actually bled into the top. So we can, we can clean some of that up now, um, but when you, when you go to file away all of the binding that's not where the nubs are, you're gonna clean up a bunch of it that way too. So you wanna get the frets pressed in and get everything nice and level to the board so that when you put the binding on, it fits nice and snug to the board. And as you can see, you have to get tall enough binding to go over the frets. By the way, guys, link in the description below to all of this binding stuff <clears throat> that we get from Stuart McDonald. Uh, I urge you to buy binding in uh, quantity so that you get a bit of a price discount, okay? So Stu Mac's pretty good about that. Um, uh, this is the uh, ABS binding. They also have celluloid binding, so check that out if, you're, if that kind of thing turns you on. Uh, one of the neat things about this binding is <clears throat> You can tell already that if I put black side dots on here, they'd really pop out, okay? So that's a great, a great thing about binding. The other great thing about binding is you don't really get any fret sprout with, with binding because there's no fret there. It's, it's undercut and this piece of, piece of hard plastic or celluloid um, uh, is, what, is what your hand feels rather than <clears throat> any binding uh, ends or bits poking out. Uh, it's a, you can spend time doing binding correctly or you can spend time doing frets correctly. Either way works great. Um, uh, I'm a big fan of gluing in frets these days. I didn't used to be, but I am now. So I advise that everybody glue frets in. It makes life way easier. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, you can spend a bunch of time kind of getting those, uh, those um, your fret ends uh, sorted out and making them feel good and feeling nice. Or you can, or you can bind the neck, and especially if you use the little, um, uh, especially if you use this Gibson technique, there's really no fret ends that need to get uh, uh, addressed, other than um, you know you don't need to, you don't need to worry about uh, doing the Phil McKnight uh, uh, nylon thing running down the side because you won't have any frets poking out. Um, if you have if you have frets that go over the binding, then you're in the same. The same boat as you were if you had no binding, okay? Uh, plus you have some other tools that you need to buy to, to nip the, uh, the fret ends off so you can go over the binding, etc., etc. We've done a bunch of videos on that. So anyway, let's, uh, let's get some binding on this guy and show you some tips and tricks for this too. So 
So like I was saying, guys, I got my frets are all pressed in and I took a file and I filed all the fret ends off so that um, so everything is nice and smooth. Um, so uh, because I'm doing just the sides here, um, I'm going to go ahead and put my, you can use acetone as well, but uh, this bind all stuff works great for, uh, for necks. Okay. So basically just mash it on there and, uh, and then put your binding on. Now, this is where the tricky bit comes in because unlike the binding on the body, this binding is actually taller than what we want to adhere it to. So it is possible to kind of fold this binding over and it, you, you need to make sure it's pressed into the uh, pressed into the side of the guitar. I'm going to show you a couple things that I do to kind of keep that from, from going squirrely on me. So the, I, I, tape the, uh, I tape the binding on. Crap. Sorry. It wasn't in the, wasn't in the, uh, the video there. I tape the binding on and then what I want to do is I want to get something and clamp this down tight to the neck. Okay. So like you can use a piece of like this, for example, is just a piece of, uh, of plexiglass and we'll clamp that in and that's what's really going to lock everything down. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If I start in the middle, I might, I might have, a, have a chance of pulling this off. Okay. last guy I ran out of room so I had to <clears throat> okay so what this what this setup is doing is actually pushing the binding tight to the neck on this edge and not allowing it to to roll over onto the fretboard okay because what I want it to do is only touch the uh, touch the side of the neck and I'm gonna grind all of this binding away next time Okay gang, so that was a fairly quick down and dirty video on a handful of tips and tricks uh, for installing binding. In this case, we only used ABS plastic binding, which is totally cool. Um, you can use wood binding, you can use different color uh, ABS binding, you can use celluloid binding, you can bind the body, you can bind the neck, you can bind one or the other, one not the other, both of them. You can do both sides. You can put a bunch of fabric on here and then put binding on it. I don't care, but binding is a cool thing. Um, and uh, a lot of people are scared of binding because they're like, oh, binding, that's, that's like, uh, makes, that, it makes things harder. It does make things harder, but it also makes things pretty classy too. So, um, so don't be afraid of binding. Give it a try, whether you use uh, wood or plastic or celluloid or, or whatever binding you want to use. Um, it's a cool, it's a cool technique and I think that if you are building guitars you are going to eventually need to learn how to bind stuff because eventually you're going to have that customer who goes, I want it bound. Happy meal for you. Um, so anyway, uh, so body binding is pretty straightforward. Neck binding is also pretty straightforward. Uh, this one is still covered in clamps but you guys get the idea. Um, I would urge you to, if you have never done that Gibson style of um, binding nubs, I would urge you to give that a try, see what you think, and um, uh, again, it's a skill that you probably won't need to have, but be nice to have in your back pocket in case somebody ever says, you know what, I gotta have that. So, um, uh, this is Matt at Texas Tip. So guys, if you haven't uh, hit that subscribe button yet, please do so, give me a thumbs up. If you appreciate content like this, you might wanna go over to my Patreon page and become a member. Even a buck a month goes a long way to helping me bring you guys neat content like this. Um, you can also sign up on YouTube. You can hit the little join button. 
Uh, I urge you to go over to the Stu Mac page and uh, follow my link. It doesn't cost you any more to use that and I get a little taste and uh, Stu Mac helps me out with a bunch of products and uh, helps me do projects like this too. So until next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, start your own YouTube channel. That's what I did. We'll see you guys next time and maybe we'll even grind these, uh, this, these binding dubs down and uh, give you an idea of how to do that because I just said you should. <laughs> All right, gang, take it easy. Have a great week.